Joining us today here is a registered nurse, Melissa Ho. Uh, she is working currently at a oncology hematology unit. She has also previously worked at many nursing homes. Welcome, Melissa. Thank you. Thank you for joining us. Um, so today we would like to ask you a few questions as to what your opinion is on the implications of performing um, geriatric cognitive assessments, such as the mini mental tests or the MOCA, and those sort of tests on um, geriatric lives. So for example, how does that impact their daily living? Well, usually after you've done a mini MOCA or a mini mental or a MOCA on the patient, depending on what stage they are at, some of them re might re start realizing I'm actually having problems and they might actually get help from other people such as like going into a nursing home or having a home care assess them and then having home care um, pro to provide any care for them just because sometimes they might actually need help just because their mental state is deteriorating. Um, but of course there are those who are in the uh, denial stage and when they're at that point we can't really do anything for them other than uh, trying to be there whenever they are whenever they need help basically um, usually most of the things is sometimes they might lose their keys don't know where they are if they do go out sometimes they might get lost and become a missing person in a way and that will really affect their family as well. Um, even daily living, they might not know if they've had breakfast yet or lunch, dinner. They might be eating more and more. They don't know the time. They don't know the date. It might be t the year 2000, but they might think it's 1945. So sometimes the time can throw them off, and it can really affect how they interact with other people as well. So you're saying that this denial stage where even after they have taken these mental tests, they may not, it may not implicate anything in these people's lives because they're simply denying it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and some population, it happens that way, which is unfortunate. Um, so in this way, what, what have some examples that you have come across? I understand that you have worked in some dementia units. Yes, and also as one of my uh, nursing school experience working with a psychiatry consultation liaison team in a hospital setting, um, there we did have an instance where a gentleman, he was uh, living in an assisted home uh, sort of environment in a group home. He was pretty well on his own for a while until he actually got into the hospital and the nursing staff and medical staff realized something's wrong. So we got a call and then we did a mini medical at first. There was still something off. So we did a mocha and even with repeated mochas day after day, it was still the same thing. We were getting the same answers from them. He could not tell us a lot of the answers. So at that point we're like, is it safe for him to even go back to a group home at this point? Maybe a nursing home and a dementia unit or some sort of long-term care unit would probably be better off for him. So at that point, he's probably going to lose his independence from there. And for that patient, it was quite hard for him. He didn't want to, but because of his short-term memory as well, every day we tell him, this is gonna, what's going to be happening but you can't remember. So it's really hard on both the patient and us as well, just to trying to try to meet at the same uh, page, trying to say, hey, this might be the best for them. But since that gentleman in particular, he didn't have any family or even friends to help him. So it was even harder for us to process and get the paperwork done just because he's not cognitive enough to sign the papers. And we are just trying to do it by having two medical staff to, to do the paper together, basically, or two physicians um, to get that done. And usually it takes quite a process. And so what would you say the benefits of doing these mental tests would be? 
benefits if they do have family and friends to take care of them or any caregivers then at least their family or like whoever is going to be care caring for them would finally understand why we're why is their family or friend at this stage or why of this sudden mental change at all um, it can also help this nursing staff say if they're on a unit that's just w simply waiting for a nursing home bed at least they're able to say hey maybe we need some help from psychiatry to say if they do need help with whatever drugs or assessments then they know who to ask for rather than guessing oh this person might just be having another psychiatric um, breakdown well that's not really the case here so the benefits at least everyone's on the same page we know what's going on so not all of us would be guessing at that point and mm -hmm. we know what the plan of care would be for all of these people absolutely and what would you say some negative consequences would be from these mental tests negative well like society they'll say oh they're crazy oh they don't know what they're doing oh they're oh it's just an old age problem well you can't really put it that way it's just because part of their brain is deteriorating and to a lot of people to a lot of elderly that will happen eventually at some point of course there is the fortunate ones that won't happen but the society will say oh we're gonna label this person as the crazy old lady as the next door neighbor the crazy next door neighbor or the crazy old man that yells when he's walking down the street well that's not really true because they're actually suffering a mental health problem that's part of the mental health so when people get labeled like that it's more of a negative impact on them so they might think like oh people are going to hate them more they're not going to be accepted by the society anymore they're going to probably have a harder time go through life in general with their families friends or even their families might even have a hard time saying, oh, I want to just bring them out for a dinner or lunch. But you never know like how people are going to look at them. They may say, oh, get this crazy person out of here just because he's mentally unstable at that point and having trouble with memories and ha having trouble knowing what they're doing at all. So, or even just the label of itself from the mental test. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so some patients they're like, "Oh, I'm not crazy. I don't want to do this test. What is this test for? I'm not. I don't need this test just because I think I'm still okay." So, uh, sometimes they act, can actually um, push the patient away and actually make them feel like, not no one is here to help me because they're just going to make me look like I'm crazy. But that's part of the assessment, which is the unfortunate part. Excellent. Thank you. So what would your opinion be on performing these mental tests on geriatric patients? Well, as a professional, we would think that those are very important just because not only does it help us to understand how we can help these people and also gives like their family and friends a better understanding as where they are at with the mental state and how they can help as well to help this patient to go through their final stages of life just because we know once you're diagnosed with dementia it doesn't get any better from this point on it's just going to deteriorate so we want to give these people and provide them with the best care as we can um, to basically walk through with them to their final days um, so I, I think anyways that these are very important to do if not we these people, these people might not have a very good way to end their life. They might be suffering, but by doing this, we know how we can help sometimes with pain medication or even psychiatric medication in a way, just to help them to keep calm and settled so then they're not going to be suffering at the end of their lives, basically, yeah. Thank you very much, Melissa. You're welcome.